Ibrahim Olufemi Gajabia Mila. God bless you all. Need to investigate the non-payment of pension arrears of retired federal civil servants by the Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate (PTAD). House calls for investigation on the non-payment of pensions due to retired federal civil servants. An online platform called Check It recently outlined ten most commonly known counterfeited products in Nigeria market. And. Urges the Federal Competition and Consumer Commission to take measures towards eradicating fake products. Glad to have you join us again on a fresh edition of the program House Tickets, a program designed to educate you on the role and processes of making laws by the legislative arm of government, Federal Republic of Nigeria. The House is still on solar break, however, on this episode, we shall take a look at some of the matters of urgent public importance, motion and bills that came up before the House went on break. We will also take a report from the committee room where the House Adder Committee on Unclaimed Funds met with some CEOs of concerned banks over the matter. Our package is complete with an interview we had with the Chief Whip of the House, Representative Tahir Mongono, who shared his thoughts on a wide range of issues. The full package comes your way shortly. Please stay tuned. The entire purpose of the legislative agenda is to direct our legislative resources and efforts in a coordinated effort to ensure the well-being of the individual in a life of safety and freedom. That is a high ambition, but it's well worth the effort. We have passed landmark legislation to fix our oil and gas industry, reform the police, and reorganize the corporate administration system in our country. We have considered and passed meaningful legislation that impacts all areas of our national life. Thanks for staying tuned. We begin the program with a report on some of the issues that came up during plenary before the House adjourned for the Salah break, starting with matters of urgent public importance, followed by motions and bills as presented from our studio. With an estimate of 47 million Nigerians indulged in the practice. On matters of urgent public importance, Representative Sada Soli moved the motion on the need to address the challenges of open defecation in Nigeria. As part of government efforts to remove Nigeria from an, an enviable world ranking in open defecation, President Muhammad Buhari on the 20th November 2019 signed an executive order 009 titled Open Defecation Free Nigeria by 2025 and other related matters. Also aware that there has been a call during the recent 9th World, War, World Water Forum in Dakar Senegal for the United Nations to establish a global platform for water to bring together political and economic decision makers, multinational institutions, academia, civil societies, and the private sector to find solutions to water and sanitation issues. Further Representative Sada Soli, in leading the debate, said, It is sad that Nigeria still tops the list of countries practicing open defecation despite various efforts by the federal and state governments. The motion was voted on and the prayers adopted. They include, urge the Federal Ministry of Water Resources as well as Health to ensure an open defecation-free society in Nigeria. Also urge the House to establish a parliamentary caucus to achieve the feat. The House notes with serious concern that outright Representative Tajuddin Yusuf also moved a motion on the urgent need to safeguard the academic pursuits of Nigerian youth in Ukraine medical universities. The plight of Nigerian youth studying medicine and dentistry and similar courses in different universities in Ukraine, whose academic pursuits have been thrown into uncertainty, confusion and threat by the Medical and Dentistry Council of Nigeria, MDCA. Also know that the Medical and Dentistry Council of Nigeria, the body which, which regulates medical profession in Nigeria, through a statement on its Twitter handle, declared that medical and dentistry degree certificates obtained from Ukraine universities 
from 2020 by Nigerians will not be honored by the council until when normal academic activities resume in Ukraine. The lawmaker lamented that many students who have expended years of academic pursuits have been thrown into uncertainty by the Medical Dentistry Council of Nigeria, MDCN, which stated that medical and dental certificates obtained from Ukrainian universities by Nigerians from 2020 will not be honored until when academic activities resume. Some of the prayers on the motion include call on the federal government to discuss with Ukrainian authorities to release transcripts of years completed from year 1 to 6 for Nigerian students willing to transfer to medical schools in Nigeria and other nations. Call on the House Committee on Tertiary Education, Health Institutions and Foreign Affairs to liaise with MCDN and other relevant MDAs to find lasting solutions to the limbo-like situation of the Nigerian students. The motion was voted I, on and adopted. Those against me say nay. Eyes have it. The ongoing communal clash between Nko people, Nko community of Yako, local government. Representative Alex Egboma also moved on the urgent need to address the communal crisis in Cross River State. Many people have fled the community for fear of further attack, which is being prompted. Our both community are currently keeping vigil and preparing for further reprisal at any slight provocation. I aware that several attempts have been made in the past by well many people and leaders in the state for the two communities to live in harmony and embrace peace, but none of these efforts have yielded any fruitful results. The lawmaker stated that the clash has claimed over seven lives and there is an urgent need to halt the situation before it escalates. Prayers on the motion include a call on all relevant security forces of the federal government to mobilize personnel to the region to forestall further bloodshed as individuals have been fleeing the region in droves. A call on the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to come to the aid of the victims and that the relevant committees of the House should ensure compliance. The Education Bank was established in 1993 to provide loans for students. Moving on to other motions from the other paper, Representative Uju Kinsley moved the motion on the need to establish the Nigerian Education Bank in line with the Nigerian Education Bank Act. Recovering loans, disbursed and providing short time loans to individuals or other bodies in appropriate cases, as well as aid authors by providing them with funds for the purpose of financing the printing and publishing of educational books, among other functions. Consigned that since inception in 1993, the Education Bank has not had a governing board for over 25 years. The bank had no physical address anywhere in Nigeria, neither has the act establishing it been repealed. Worried that the failure to establish the bank has affected students as they lack credible sources to take loans to finance their education as the education bank has not been built anywhere in Nigeria. The House, after consideration, resolved to invite the Federal Ministers of Finance and Education and the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria to brief the House on the Education Bank with a view to expanding efforts to re-establish the Education Bank of Nigeria, mandate the Committees on Banking and Currency, and Legislative Compliance to ensure compliance. Representative Babangida Ibrahim proposed an amendment to prayer two of the motion to call the House Committee on Finance, Education, and that on Banking and Currency to be part of the briefing. Need to investigate the non-payment of pension arrears. Still on motions? Lawmaker Sergius Ogun also moved a motion on the need to investigate the non-payment of pension areas of retired federal civil servants by the Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, PTAD. The failure of the Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, PTAD, to pay pensioners monthly pensions and gratuities based on technological glitches amounts to gross incompetence and ineffectiveness on the part of PTAD. The House is also cognizant that the claim of PTAD that technological glitches which caused it to be in areas of pension and gratuities is in the domain of the Accountant General of the Federation and Government Integrated Financial Management System. Give me, is unacceptable. Being an investigative motion, it was not debated, prompting the House to invite the Head of Service of the Federation, Accountant General of the Federation, 
Director General of the National Pension Commission and the Executive Secretary of PTAD to appear before the Committees on Pension and Public Service Matters and provide relevant explanation for the non-payment of pensions and gratuities to retired federal civil servants for nine months. If those in support, please say aye. Those against me say nay. Eyes have it. Another motion that was moved was on the need to eradicate fake products from the Nigerian market and stores, sponsored by Representative Jimo Abdul Rahim Olajide. Fake products include but are not limited to unauthorized or illegally manufactured, reproduced, and not a product associated with abuse of recognized intellectual property rights. The motion was voted on, adopted, and the House resolved to urge the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission and other relevant agencies to simplify the process of laying complaints on suspected producers and importers of fake products, as well as enhance enforcement capacity to combat the menace. Mandate the Committees on Drugs and Narcotics, Industry, Customs and Excise, and Ports and Harbors to, as a matter of urgency, liaise with relevant stakeholders with a view to finding lasting solutions to the menace of fake products in Nigeria. Most of these people who are enthusiastic to participate in the leadership space are not so well empowered economically. Yet on bills, Representative Benjamin Kalu moved for second reading of a bill for an act to establish Entrepreneurship Development Bank of Nigeria, to charge it with the responsibility, among other things, to provide medium and long-term finance for indigenous small businesses and to provide for establishment of Nigerian entrepreneurship development, encourage aspiring entrepreneurs and small-scale enterprises in Nigeria, and for related matters. We must show as parliament that in line with the sustainable development goals, that uh, financial inclusion of the youth has a ripple effect in uh, uh, curing poverty and other indices of the SDG. In line with them, even what the, uh, the youth, the youth uh, Africa Development Bank is trying to do. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We to empower the youth. The bill was voted on and referred to the Committee on Finance and that of Industry. Another establishment bill that scared second reading was a bill for an act to amend the Education Correspondence Colleges Accreditation Act Cap E2 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 and for related matters sponsored by lawmaker Al Hassan Adodogwa. The bill was referred to the House Committee on Education and Services. Quite a number of bills came third reading during the week, among which are a bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the Federal University of Environmental Technology, Koroma Sankpewa. Tai Ogoni, and for related matters, sponsored by lawmaker Al Hassan Adodogwa. A bill for an act to establish the Nigerian Institute of Agriculturists to be charged with the responsibilities of setting standards and code of ethics for the effective control and management of the profession of agriculture and for related matters, sponsored by lawmaker Adodogwa. And a bill for an act to amend the Nursing and Midwife Free Act Cap N143 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 to review the composition of the Council, qualification and tenure of office of members of the Council, review penalty provisions and compositions of tribunal, and for related matters also sponsored by lawmaker Al Hassan Adodogwa. Thanks for staying with us on House Tickets. The program continues with extracts from the interview we had with the Chief Whip of the House of Representatives, Representative Mohammed Tahir Mongono, where he shared his thoughts on a wide range of issues as well as his roles in the Ninth House of Representatives. He first spoke on the journey so far of the Ninth House. Well, the journey has been very fulfilling. Fulfilling in the sense that... Uh, we have been able to substantially achieve our covenant with the people in tandem with the legislative agenda that we have given it as the covenant between us or as the social contract between us and the people that we represent to deliver good governance and dividends of democracy to their doorsteps. And this is clearly manifested by the landmark legislations 
that impacts positively on the lives of Nigerians that has been passed by the Ninth House of Representatives and indeed the National Assembly as a whole. The lawmaker said part of his role is ensuring the cooperation of his honorable colleagues amongst other responsibilities. The office of the chief whip is responsible for making sure that members behave in accordance with the ethics and values of a member as enshrined in extant laws and our rules and regulations. I thank God members are behaving very well. Members are conducting themselves in accordance with the norms and values that is respected of them. And I've received tremendous uh, cooperation from members in the discharge of the duties of my office. Moving on to the challenges in terms of vote counts, the Chief Whip said there has been none, especially with the introduction of electronic voting. We don't have any problem as far voting because there is accountability and transparency in the voting system through the electronic uh, voting that we have introduced in the House, especially when it comes to passage of the virus, uh, amendment of the virus provisions of the Constitution, which is constitutional, and we have deployed the use of electronic voting to us achieving that. So we don't have any, any, any problem. And then when it comes to the voice vote, for, uh, on the basis of which the presiding officer rules on motion or, or passage of bills or motions, I don't think we don't have, we didn't experience any very serious objection. The chief whip further spoke about the positives and challenges of his reign in the last three years. The National Assembly, or indeed the House of Representatives, is a composition of various uh, of people of diverse backgrounds and culture and what have you. Definitely in the course of uh, managing such a group of people, you will have one or two impressions and what have you. Uh, for example, members not coming to the house properly dressed, of which I have to raise an objection and then alert them that they should go and properly dress. And also of members making noise in the course of the proceedings of the house, of which I have to call them to order, which is very, very normal in, uh, in gathering of uh, various personalities of various backgrounds. Speaking on the expectations of Nigerians in the last legislative year, the lawmaker gave more clarifications on the subject matter. Nigerians will expect a more robust legislation, legislations that are octotonous, meaning legislations that are in tandem or in consonance with, the, with their wishes and aspirations. Such legislations uh, are what Nigerians should expect in the remaining one year of uh, our tenure. On a final note, lawmaker Mohammed Tahir Mongono spoke on the oncoming 2023 general elections. As we approach the election year 2023 and then the house is winding down, uh, very soon the president will submit the 2023 budget. And one of the plus of the present House of Representatives or the National Assembly as a whole is the restoration of the January to December budget timeline. And we are going to adhere strictly to that timeline in the passage of the budget so that Nigerians will get the dividends of democracy as enshrined in the budget. We intend to achieve that also and sustain that during the remaining one year of our period and also uh, we expect the house of uh, how various state houses of assembly to concur with the various uh, legis uh, amendment of the provision of the constitution that uh, we have passed and then also take steps by way of legislation towards improving uh, the security of lives and properties of Nigerians because that is the primacy of governance. 
at this point, we will go on a short break and when we return, a report from the meeting between the other committee on unclaimed funds and CEOs of concerned banks. Do keep watching. We have to do away with the issue of... If there are challenges, you can always come to the National Assembly. We must back that effort. By if there was only 2% left, why didn't the ministry inject some money for 20 Why it is fighting for the same area that they were putting there? Are you able to come and clap? We are here in continuation of our exercise as mandated by the leadership of this house. The House Adult Committee on Hanging and Unclaimed Funds is a committee set up to help in the recovery of federal government funds domiciled in MDAs, Nigeria's Commercial Banks and the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. The committee had its sitting before the House went on cellar break, during which chief executive officers of some concerned commercial banks made an appearance before it. The chief executive officers were to answer questions relating to non-payment of expired advance payment guarantees, transaction taxes, funds on accounts without BVN and dormant accounts, among other remittances. The bank should therefore provide information on the following. One. Dormant accounts, MDAs, corporates and individuals, all currencies. B. Dormant account without BVN, MDAs, corporates and individuals in all currencies. Two. Accounts maintained for MDAs and their bank statement between January 1, 2000 and March 31, 2022. Three, information on transaction taxes deducted from qualifying transaction, that is, VAT, withholding tax, and stamp duties. Those who appeared before the committee included the executive director of Echo Bank, Mr. B. Olubami, and executive director of Zenith Bank PLC, Mr. Umar Ahmed. Responding to inquiries from the lawmakers, Mr. Umar Ahmed raised a fundamental issue saying that there is exception to those who could own bank accounts without BVN, provided it is not beyond the threshold of 300,000. Not every individual account operated in Nigeria does need a BVN. By a CBN regulation, it's called a wallet or a POS. This was approved by the CBN as part of what they considered financial inclusion. Well, like I said, I'm just getting this report here, but it's something that is the public information. It's actually a circular by the central bank authorizing banks to open accounts for what they considered financially excluded. So which means the CBN gives approval to all financial institutions to open accounts for individuals up to certain threshold. And those accounts are authorized to be operated also within those thresholds. So you don't Meanwhile, while giving room for further reconciliation of figures, the committee emphasized that the nation's financial regulations should be obeyed by the concerned institutions, while unclaimed monies must be paid into the coffers of government with the hope of using such for development projects. Representatives of Bank of Agriculture, Providos and FCMB also appeared before the investigative committee. This is where we will draw the cutters on this week's edition of the program house ticket. Always remember to make use of our social media handles on display to watch our previous programs and also direct your comments, observations and questions. Keep watching house ticket on NTA Parliament for more education on the workings of the legislature. Till I come your way again, do stay safe always. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <music>